Hi everyone, so today I want to do a demonstration on how to get S-Class in the Solosseum series. So for those that don't know, the Solosseum series is basically a tournament where you battle against the best of the best when it comes to familiar taming and battling. So the reason the Solosseum series is quite difficult is because you can actually use your items during the tournament to restore your health or magic which means that the equipment that you have and the accessories and familiars you choose are very important. What I found to be the best way to approach the Solosseum series is to rely on brute strength in the first two or three rounds and then in the last round you want to go all out magic. Okay, so the primary familiar that I would recommend for Oliver for the S-Class is the Catastrosaurus, which is a fully metamorphed Dinoceros. It has a really high attack power. This is a great familiar to have as your primary fighter. The Dinoceros can be tamed on the genie's footsteps uh, in the Shimmering Sands. It's right near Alma Moon. So if you haven't tamed this one, then just fly over to there, the genie's footsteps, and go tame yourself a Dinoceros. It's also a good idea to have one backup familiar because the Catastrosaurus, it doesn't have high stamina. So every now and again, so that his stamina bar can actually rebuild during the battle, you want to swap to your secondary familiar, which I highly recommend be a Gruffian. For the simple reason that the Gruffian also has high attack power and it also has Air Splitter as a special ability, just like the Dinoceros slash Catastrosaurus. In the first round, the first thing you want to do is actually enable all out defence, go to your tactics and ensure that your party members are set to keep us healthy. So yeah, as you can see my party is maxed out at level 99, um, which if you don't already know you can level up fast um, battling taco tacos. I have actually created a demonstration video of how to do that as well, so if you want to check that out I'll link it up to the video. So yeah, for this first round, just keep using your attack power, don't use any special abilities because that uses up your MP and it's not really that necessary this early in the tournament. So yeah, as you can see, I've changed out to the Gruffian, just waiting for the Catastrosaurus's stamina bar to refill. And then I'll swap back. You also want to keep an eye on whether or not you're in all-out defence because it does stop automatically. And if your party's not in all-out defence, they will attack and that will just leave them open for being attacked themselves um, and you definitely want them to be defending all the time. Another reason why all out defense is a good idea is because when your party is defending and they actually do get attacked it will pop out some of those glims as well so that's a good way to make sure you've got health and MP restoring items to use on the battlefield rather than not being able to use your own items. So yeah, just make sure you catch all the glims, or pick up all the glims that fall down. So yeah, round two is smiley and surly. So these ones are a little bit more tougher than the first round, but you still want to rely on just your main attack.
again. First thing you do, all out defense. So yeah, if you do what I did and max out your party to level 99, then you can see that they have quite high HP and MP stats. So it doesn't really matter if they get hit a little bit because it has very little impact, especially if your party's in all-out defense. So yeah, just keep hitting them. Um, if you do get really desperate when it comes to HP, then just switch back to Oliver, use your spell and use Healing Touch because that consumes very little MP and it will make sure you get a little bit of extra HP. So as you can see the second round does take a little bit longer when you're just relying on your strength. Um, but do trust me, if you don't use your magic in this round then that's the best way forward because the next two rounds they do get much harder and you're going to need your magic. So yeah, also trust in Esther to heal you um, at certain points, which she will do. If she doesn't heal you, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with just quickly switching to Esther and making her heal you and then swapping back to Oliver. So there's a the second round done and we used absolutely no magic whatsoever. Right, so for the Sage of Ages, he actually is quite a lot tougher than the last two rounds. So you might want to alternate between using some magic attacks and also strength. So yeah, as you can see, these ones seem much more aggressive. So make sure you do pick up all those glims. So yeah, with this round we're actually using Air Splitter and also normal physical attack. And also alternating between Oliver's magic at the same time because he needs to heal himself sometimes. Yeah. 
hitting them with the Catastrosaurus, uh, just normal attack. It does cause quite a lot of damage, but your Air Splitter move does cause more damage. I'd still try my hardest not to use Air Splitter too much, not rely on it in this round. Um, but you can use it maybe a handful of times if you've got a maxed out party and the maximum MP you can have. What I've just done is used Healing Hand from Oliver, which will heal Esther as well. Um, and I did this because in the next round we're going to need Esther full health so that she can heal me. Right, so with this last round, you can rely on magic a lot more because um, you're going to need to use your magic. Brute strength alone isn't going to win the battle. So yeah, I'd really watch out for the Mighty as well because of his cut loose move. It tends to be the default move for Mighty. So he'd be the first one I'd target, take him out straight away because he can interrupt your magic attacks with his cut loose move and also cause quite a bit of damage. There he goes again, cut loose. I mean, if you want to, you can actually go for the Drongo first because that does have healing as a special ability. It's entirely up to you which one. It does have healing tier, but it only heals a tiny amount. It doesn't really compare to the amount of attack damage that you can inflict. So I do think it is better to actually attack the Mighty first, take him out first because he causes the most damage. So yeah, make sure you run around the battlefield, collect all the glims. So yeah, don't forget that the Gruffian has Air Splitter too. So in this final battle, when you have to swap from the Catastrosaurus back to the Gruffian, you can still use that move. There we go, he's just completely interrupted my healing spell with his cut loose move. Let's try and do that again. Oh, 
okay but as you can see by using brute strength and also using a splitter move we've already whittled down the enemy's health to about just under halfway and might is almost dead Yeah, we've not actually been in this battle that long so far, so let's just finish off this mighty. Now, it's good to note that the Ace Splitter move costs 22 MP. If you have maxed out your party, then you'll have over 400 MP at your disposal. So yeah, when you get to this point, you know, they've barely got any life left. It's basically a slam dunks. And if you've still got MP left, you can just make sure you're up to maximum health and you can go all out attack. Right, and there you go. So there's basically a few tips on how to get S-Class in the Solosium series. I've actually already got S-Class, so you won't see the main reward that you get, um, which I wouldn't want to spoil for you anyway. Um, but yeah, if you follow all these tips, then you should have no problem. Um, any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll be happy to help in any way I can. So yeah, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. I've been Heather at Amalgam Mingle, and thank you very much for watching.